All right, guys, welcome back to Broke Bets here. Uh, Lane with you. Always got my co host with me, as always. What's up, dude? Yes, sir. This should be a halfway decent card, I believe. Yeah, it'd be a little fun card. Um, getting some decent fights stacked up uh, before UFC 300. Before we go back to the Apex, so got some bets here for you guys. Let's just start it off. We got first straight bet. I'm taking Aslan to beat Anton Tricali. Um I realize that he's lost the first fight they've had, but stylistically, you know, Anton's just bitten getting chinned by people. He had chicken legs in the Vitor Petrino fight. He had, uh, um, you know, chicken legs when he got knocked out by Tyson Pedro. He was getting hammered on the Dana White's Contender Series fight, uh, and he only won because of some clinch and takedowns. So I think Aslan can catch him, and... Uh, Maybe just keep more range in this fight. Use the leg kick, stay out of the clinch. And he even seemed stronger in the clinch when it went there in their first fight. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to trust Aslan. But, again, with only half a unit, I feel like uh, it's not worth just uh, losing a full unit on this guy. So, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, uh, with that, it, he's probably got a win in, in uh, round one here. Uh, we'll probably gas out if it goes longer than that. But, yeah, I like his leg kicks and, and his power, too, so. Um, he was winning their first fight and I believe he'll, he'll catch him sometime in that first round in, in this one here. Hey Amen. I hope I'm, I'm, I'm done with the pleasure, man. Uh, next bet, taking Melissa Gatto. Um, don't understand how Dudakova, I just don't see where she can really win this fight. I think maybe on the stand up she could have some moments of slightly maybe outpiecing Gatto. Um, and then maybe top control on the ground. That's the only way I think she really does it. But Gato is much more dangerous on the ground. Um, I think she can stick and move better on the feet. She's got a lot more length. And just being the natural 125-er, she's very cut. Uh, I just see the advantage for her everywhere in this fight. So, again, I trust a women's fighter the last time I bet one. And uh, I think I bet like half a unit because I didn't feel like losing a full one. So we're just going to stick with a lower, you know, the lower amount here still with uh, 0.75 units. Yeah, um, the natural 125er here, uh, better stand up, better, um, better striking here. And I think she'll win based on damage here on the scorecards. Uh, due to Kova, I mean, when she's winning, it's usually just uh, ground control time. It has been. So, yep, and yeah, I, hopefully I, more damage here for Gato. I see Gato getting to the back in the clinch. I see her getting on the ground on the back. I see a lot more options there. So hopefully she gets back in the win column. Um, prop bets: Aaron Blanchfield, Manion Faro over four and a half rounds. Um, it's more, you know, Faro could KO Blanchfield, but she's gonna be very passive in a fight like this. She's going to circle the cage, she's going to stick and move, and uh, Blanchfield will just uh, probably try to swarm her like Marab in a way where she'll just go for takedowns, and it's kind of a question if she can get that submission or not. And you know, it's it's kind of up in the air. Um, I could see her definitely getting a submission, but like just statistically with women's main events, I mean, we just even saw with Rose last weekend, that over was like plus 120, and it was like the easiest over four and a half someone could hit, so... Um, generally in these women's fights, um, women's main events, especially, um, they're going to go over four and a half rounds. So yeah. Yeah. I think they could start out a little, little slower here with the five rounds and then neither one of these ladies have been finished before. So, um, they both have shown some durability and I think that continues here. And I think Blanchfield wins a decision, but you got, um, Thoreau, so either way. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not sold on either person. I, any chick fight you give me, I mean, that, that Gato one, I know I sound pretty confident about, but, like, any chick fight you give me, I could give you all the whole spiel of why I think whoever's going to win, and then they go into the fight and they don't follow the game plan or anything right. like that. So I, I think it'll just be Blanchfield holding her up against the cage and right. in the clinch and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and my thought process is I thought that Thrill might fight on the outside because, like, when... Talia Santos fought Aaron Blanchfield. She used a lot of like high or heavy punches early to like tire herself out. And then that's kind of how Blanchfield got her way back into the fight in round three. But um, I, I, I don't disagree with anyone's angle in this fight. I know 
some guys have huge boners for Aaron Blanchfield, so it's whatever. Um, <laughs> over four and a half rounds, that's what I'll say. Fights. Parlays. Okay. I got Emmers and Ruzaboyev. Emmers, just better everywhere. Uh, Landwehr's easy to cheer for. He's a bigger name, technically, I think, here in the UFC, just because he's been in a, a little fu- some fun fights in the past two years. Um, Emmers, though, just, I think, better grappler, better striker, better boxing, better kicks, just better everywhere, in my opinion. And then Ruzaboyev, Cedricus Dumas went to jail a month ago. Uh, Ruzaboyev, way more fights than him. Obviously, a lot of them are easy win fights, but uh, even with uh, Dumas's record, you know, like he only has like three UFC fights here and none of them have been impressive. So I like Ruzaboyev just to be better everywhere in this fight and uh, hopefully wear on the tank of uh, Dumas and then find a submission or KO. Yeah, Emmers has uh, long, lengthy weapons here, and um, yeah, I just think he'll he's got a good takedown defense too. So I don't see Landwer um, taking him down. Um, yeah, I think Emmers wins this fight anywhere it goes. And then yeah, Ruzaboyev, uh, Dumas has not impressed. He's getting subbed by Josh Fremd. I would pick Ruzaboyev over Josh Fremd as well too. So. Um, yeah, it, I mean, his last nine fights, he's all won them by first-round finish, so I think that continues here as well. Yeah, it's it's a good or a bad sign for Ruzaboyev with stuff like that. I mean, I'm just going to pull down to the next bet already because I got Ruzaboyev in another bet. So I bet Ruzaboyev extremely early, uh, just thinking I was going to beat all this line movement, and then I see people betting on Dumas, which just shocked me. I think scenario-wise, you know, watching Dumas's fights – nothing looks that great and i don't know if it's just because he looks like a darker version of the island boys he just has that or like 21 savage he's got at least that like funny funny look i don't know um but uh i just feel like ruza boy should be like a, at least like a minus 400 here and it feels like uh strange to me that people are pulling the trigger on dumas's line i mean cody brunish pulled like six guillotines on dumas and it seems like that was the only reason uh, he was able to get on top and win that fight at the same time. And we're talking about Cody fucking Brunich here. So, um, yeah, nothing's impressed me. And then, of course, I got Malcoon here with uh, uh, him. Because I think Malcoon's just going to be the better wrestler. And uh, he's going to protect his neck. And I think he wins at least two of the rounds. If Petrosky starts fast, I think Malcoon has the better cardio. So, yeah. Yep. Uh, better cardio for Malcoon and uh, better wrestler and probably better striking too as well, or definitely better striking. So, yeah, I think uh, he wins that by decision, and I think he'll be better anywhere um, besides the um, straight submission game. But and yeah, we, I think he'll be able to avoid those submissions. Yeah. We talked about last week how uh, tough fighters have been like on a horrible roll. I mean, Brian Battle seems to be the exception in recent years. Um, but like in in the recent couple of years, the last three or four toughs, these guys have just been losing like crazy. So I feel like picking against them is uh, probably the uh, way to go. Yep. Finally, uh, we're doing Virna and Lupita Godinez over two and a half rounds. Um, I also feel like uh, taking Virna by decision, which at one point was like plus four hundred, is like a pretty big steal for anyone out there. I mean. Lupi hasn't been submitted. Virna is kind of a grappler herself. Uh, you saw Lupita Ganita has got taken down by uh, uh, Angela Hill at moments, I think, in their fight. Right. So, yep. yeah, get it like these chick fights. I mean, get, them getting the ground is not that not that hard. So um, a lot of over two and a half for both those girls in their fights. And then we're going with Bill Algio, Cal Nelson. I don't think Bill Algio really has the power to maybe one shot kyle nelson it's me more of a cardio thing and then uh kyle nelson probably people have a hard time knocking at bill algio because bill algio is a good chin so uh i see that one going over as well yeah algio's never been uh knocked out before and kyle nelson has good uh striking defense he's never been he's been one two three four four straight decisions so um 
ever since he got KO'd by um, Billy Q, he's been um, really good uh, defensively sound and not putting himself in bad positions. Right. Um, he keeps his guard really high up. So, um, yeah, I like the over there. And same with Virna. I think she'll just uh, be grappling Loopy the entire time. And Loopy's never been sub before. So I see that as the, the path for Virna here. We just saw Fernando Padilla as well just dust uh, Puelo. And then, uh, you know, Kyle Nelson faced him. And now those two just kind of went toe to toe the whole time. So, um, stylistically, right. I think a good one for the over two and a half. Um, other lines I've just been looking at, and I maybe I just didn't have the cojones, the balls to pull the trigger on a couple of these. Um, Angel Pacheco, Ka- uh, Kalen Lochran under two and a half rounds. I think that's a decent option. Um, however, we both bet Lochran by submission as a little side bet at plus 900. I think that's a steal. Um, I would imagine this one ends up on the ground with Lochran trying to submit him. So. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think the striking will be be close, and uh, I think Lochran just is uh pure strength. Uh, I think he'll he'll see the advantage on the mat and hopefully take it there. Right. Um. And he could be grounding, and pounding, and then um, Pacheco gives up his back and and remake a joke. Boom. Uh. Other ones over two and a half or Dennis Bajutia. I thought about it just because that line came down. Um, let's see. Chidi and Jokowani's lines came down so far. I've told, I've already said I can't trust him. I'm not going to do it, but he's the much better fighter, at least in my opinion. Um, other than not having that doubt in him. Um, and then Vicente Luque's came down such a crazy amount that there's a lot of value, I think, on him there too. Just, uh, not going to trust his chin still quite yet. I haven't seen him get punched since his, uh, Jeff Neal, uh, debacle fight, you know, so. You know, wait. Any more thoughts? Yeah, there's nothing really else I was too keen on here. Line right. movement's been crazy all week. Yeah, yeah, line movement's been everywhere. All right, well, that's all we got for this. Uh, these bets, and uh, stay tuned Sunday night for uh, uh, the next video to come out, and then of course we'll be on to UFC 300. So, all right, guys, Ooh. peace. peace.